Hey, what is up everybody? I am here at, uh, if you can't read, Ross Monster. Uh, I have two owners, right? Both of you guys are owners? I got Luke and I have Ross of Ross Monster, weird. So we are going to actually get a behind the scenes look of what these guys do, how many are in their crew, how many are working, like they're building overlanding truck rigs, you're building vans, pretty much anything that wants to come to you, you guys will build. Have you guys done a bus? I'm putting you on the spot. We're working on a bus right now. Are you? Actually, yeah. There you go, working on a bus. Yeah. They have a design team. It is a full operational, just builder, outfitter, whatever you guys want to call it here. And we're going to get a behind the scenes look for everybody. Stay tuned for all of that in this video. And again, massive thank you to Kyle. Oh, yeah, buddy. <laughs> Kyle's helping me out behind the camera. So thank you so much, guys. Here we go. So not much going on in here, guys, no, but this is just your brick room. <laughs> yeah, no brakes allowed. No brakes ever, huh? <laughs> yeah. All right, so this is a work day. This is a full, this is a Monday I'm recording this. People are working, so just excuse the noise, but I really feel like it's better for the audience to see like an actual working in progress. So kind of talk to me about Ross Monster. Where did it really kind of start from and stem from? Way back when Ross and I met uh, through a buddy who owned a school bus. Okay. Um, we started going on trips together and we uh, saw a friend build out a van and he built it with like a Ryobi jigsaw. We'd like to try our hand at that. And so we built a van in the driveway of one of Ross's job sites. We sold it. Uh, we bought another couple vans, built them, picked up some clients, and we've we grown through three shops. Okay, and what, here. What, is a, what is the established time? When, was, when did the Ross Monster officially get established? Ross Monster was established in 2010. We've been building vehicles exclusively since 2016. Okay. Um, we did some residential and furniture work in there in those beginning years. And what's your well, background? My background is a mechanical engineer, Okay. Um, and Ross is the craftsman. Uh, you, were you a cabinet maker? Were you just you, trim, you, furniture, all of the above? All of the above. So right when you walk on a shop floor, is anybody allowed back here? Is this open to the public? Like let's say, let's say a client wants to come in. Will you show them this operation? Yep. Show all yeah. You will. Yeah. I mean, it's super fun to walk around, see what other people are doing. It inspires new ideas and. Kyle and I have already walked the floor. We actually know where pretty much everything is. New surprises for us, I think, during this, so it's gonna be exciting. So I walk out on the shop floor and I see these mamma jammas. What the heck? We're, we're gonna get a tour in of them separately if I haven't already released that video. These are our Bajas. This is, I guess, Luke and my brainchild we worked on for four years, four now. years now. Wow. And it was, we kind of just wanted to build something that we, we would want and we would use. What I understand, a client can either bring you their existing truck or you can get them a truck. Yeah, correct. Now it has to be on a pretty beefy chassis. We We're recommend talking, yeah, for like a build like this, a three quarter ton or a one ton truck. Which are the Ford F-350s or the Chevy 3500s? Yeah, or a Ram 3500. Or a Ram 3500. I'm gonna put you on the spot, what's your favorite? Chassis. I'm a Ford guy. Okay. We do so many Ford. We haven't actually done any Rams yet. Everyone that we've been working with is either Chevy or Ford, and they are either Chevy or Ford. <laughs> they are like, diehard. Right? They, that's I mean, a cold follow. Yeah. I'm gonna have to come back out, and I'm gonna have to take because you, you have a rental fleet, which I didn't mention. Yeah. You have a rental fleet, and I'm gonna have to come back out, and maybe take a Ford out because I just took out the Baja Chevy. Yep. Which is a rental. And what do they rent for per night? Uh, 325. The Baja is 325 per night. And then you also have a van rental fleet, which is how much per night? 275. 275. So I'd love to take out maybe when I come back out and actually go camping in one. Yeah, we thoroughly tested our first two that we made for sure down in Baja for 30 days. So is that where the Baja name came from? Yeah. Yep. All right, let's pan around because we actually see some vans being built. These are clients? Yep. Okay. So these are all custom builds. Well, that's interesting. Everybody says, all these upfitters say custom. Yeah, yeah well, okay. what do we mean by that? Yeah, can you explain, like, oh my God, this is a lot different than one of my good friends, Chad, one yeah. of your guys' good friends. You guys built his uh, van for him, and this doesn't look anything like Chad's van. So no. it is truly custom. Yeah, when we say custom, we'll work with you to design the layout, talk to you, learn about your systems, design the exact you know, specs on those that are going to fit your use case, and then you obviously get to pick all the finishes, fixtures, hardware. Yeah, because even like just use Chad as an example again. Uh, he has Corian countertops, and these are butcher block. Yeah, that's just one little small iota of the design features. And you even work on layout because a lot of other builders are like A, B, C, D floor plan, and you guys are like that's out the window. Yep. I don't think we have any client vans that are too alike. Uh, everyone is 
completely different. Your rental fleeters are all the same. Yeah. Yep. yep, and we've built some spec vans that might be out there that some people bought that are identical. Which I have, if I haven't put but that video out yet, we're gonna have a tour of a spec van build. All of our client builds are completely custom. Like now are those custom? Yeah. The Bajas? They are. Both of these are for clients. So this one's in for service. We're doing some, we're adding a secondary stuff. alternator. Yeah, we're adding some stuff to his, and this one is in the build, in the shop right now for a four-week build for a custom client. And what is your warranty for either the Baja or a van? Three, uh, three year, 36,000 mile on both. On both, okay. Yeah. So not only are they owners, obviously he goes out, you do a lot of backcountry, so both of well, you Well, he probably does more stuff than me at this point, but yeah, we were just this weekend on a river trip for just a couple nights. But that's how we met, was on the Grand Canyon doing a river trip. That's yeah. where we decided to buy a van. When you say river trip, kayaking? Rafting. Rafting. So it's like, we take our friend's school bus, 20 people, Grand Canyon, 16 days, rafting, camping on the banks of the river. That's some dangerous stuff right yeah. there. That's not my, I mean, I'd do it, but I need to go with somebody like you guys. <laughs> yeah, well, so that's I don't, how I started. I don't yeah. kill myself. That's how these guys got me into it. Really? And oh. now you're like, I can't get enough? Oh, yeah. So we have a, uh, a hanging fruit. <laughs> What's going on? Yeah, this is, I mean, it's not often you get to see a mattress in our shop, but we're doing a custom. Oh, you're doing a pop-up on a mattress? Yeah. Oh, mattress that's rad. Mattress. We do oh. a lot of pop-ups on the hybrid sprinters, but yeah, that's for this little guy right here. That's actually kind of cool. Yeah. Why yeah, not? It makes it standable. Yeah. The whole, pretty much the whole roof comes out of that thing. So now when it pops, you have full standing height the whole way. So in-house you have a wood shop team. Oh yeah. You have a fabricating team. Mm -hmm. You have an assembly team. Yeah, installers. Installers. Um, electrician. Electrician, electrician. Electrician, yeah. Mechanical. Um, yeah. We I mean, we're just in the beginning stages of everything. Yeah, can we peek, can we peek inside a couple of these? Yeah. yeah. Week two on the build. Week so two? Week two, yeah. That's already two weeks in? All of our sprinters. The you guys can keep build. working. I don't want to take you away from... <laughs> we got what we need. All right. The custom van builds come in for three weeks. But, I mean, you've been... You and some of our... Yeah, we've been working with the client uh, pretty regularly for six months at this point. Um, On the so, phone, emails, design changes, yeah, uh, materials. Yes. So by the time the van hits the shop floor, they have full 3D renderings. They've signed off on the plan, everything from the specs and capabilities down to, you know, the exact placement of your outlets. Um, and so all the materials are here on the shelves behind you here. You can see like each bay Jesus. is just like for one client. So they're all ready to go. So when these vans show up here week one, it's three weeks and then they're out the door. You know, the process is, it's yeah. just cargo van comes in, we cut the windows, we do all your electrical wiring, kind of rough van wiring, insulation, subfloor. In the meantime, the wood shop, which we'll get around to, yeah. is cutting, building all the cabinets, and then the cabinets get installed. And then we'll normally have our electricians and our plumbers, mechanical guys in there installing systems. It looks like you'll build on any chassis because oddly enough, while I'm here in the shop, I have a ProMaster, I have a Sprinter, I have a Metris, <laughs> and I have a Transit. Yeah. And then I have a Baja. So yeah. you literally have everything across the board. Yeah. Yeah, well, if it drives. That was not planned for me to be no. here. No. That was not. No. Th this no, is, a, this is unusual. The lot, <laughs> the lot, got, I would say most of our fans are Sprinters. Yeah. Yeah. A majority are. Yeah. yeah. And you'll do two wheel drive, four wheel drive, all wheel drive, doesn't matter. The new, yeah. actually your spec van, your show van, is an all-wheel drive. Yep. 2023. Yep. All right, let's go to the wood shop. See Kyle's favorite stuff. I mean, if you're a fan of this yellow stuff, you know, oh, the oh, yellow oh. tools. Well, we started with- I got a red it's guy. Hard, it's hard to like, you can't ever switch because now you got all the batteries. Yeah. All right, what is in here? I see a snowmobile. I kind of want that. <laughs> <laughs> Don't, <laughs> Don't tell just, Ross that I parked that in here. Luke's storage <laughs> facility. He's like, if I just hide it in the shop somewhere, will it bother you? Like, yeah, that's fine. It looks like this is actually storage. This it's is where you have storage. templates, we bumper templates, glue. We got bumpers. Bumpers we pull off the trucks. Bumpers going on vehicles. So you guys use it all, whatever the client wants. Yeah, yeah. Aluminous wants. backwards, CA yeah. tune. We have our preferences. Okay. Yeah. Well, now I'm gonna ask. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do that on camera. Oh, you can, <laughs> yeah. you can. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. We stage all of our cabinets. So a lot of our cabinets that will be going into upcoming builds that already have built, but the vehicle might not be quite ready for them. This is where the money gets printed. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so our wood shop is definitely, I would say, kind of what put us on the map. When you talk about fully custom, like this is where it starts, right? The build outs. 
This is this is a woodworker's dream. <laughs> this is what I love. It looks like you have some of the best equipment. It looks like you have a saw stop. Yeah, we have a couple saw stops. Looks like you have some fest tools. Oh yeah. Some of the best in the biz. All our sanders are fest tools. Oh, they have to be. Fest tool track saws. From a trim carpentry background. And yes. Fest tool. Then well, are you I, even a trim I, carpentry? I'm an ambassador for heart tools, so yeah. I have to. Stay true to them. Yeah. Ninety percent of our cabinets now yeah. are CNC, which um, we have a few guys that can run that, and then everything moves to this guy, which is our edge bander. So. Well, let me ask you this, because you said you do everything custom. Like a CNC is great for repeatable parts. Well, if you have a good program, we use a program called Mosaic. Okay. And it takes me a couple hours to build a fully custom built band. And then the these program. guys buy me just assemble. And then yeah, well. No, uh, so Preston, one of our guys there, he's in charge of our CNC, so he does all the cutting. Okay. So he knows how to run the CNC, he does all that, so he finds So here putting tomorrow. down the plywood and then well, hitting a button and sipping coffee? <laughs> <laughs> Don't make it sound bad. <laughs> Sometimes the auto loader, loader doesn't work, so he has to lift the plywood. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, I get it, I get it. <laughs> Yeah. No, there's a lot of work that goes into a CNC. It's yeah. not just like what I just They're said. They're finicky. Yeah, they and can from be. From what I hear from everyone that has them, it's like everyone's always finicking with them. Does so. this one have the vacuum table? It does. That's it does. A, not yeah. a cheap endeavor, what yeah. you guys have. Yeah, it's great when it works. And then the edge bander, we've had a few other edge banders throughout the Dude. process. And Ugh. it was always a nightmare. So now we You have even have a bunch of colors and, and different trees. Yeah. Maple, walnut, much birch. Every species. And then your Phoenix products, we get matched edge banding for like all the Phoenix colors that we use. So what if I wanted like, out. like, like, cause you use Phoenix, like you just said. Yep. Let's say I want like a, like a dark blue Phoenix with like a, a maple edge. Oh yeah, we can do that. Yeah. Right. You can put any edge banding on any product, super easy. See how I just came up with that though, off the top of the dome? That, that's a, that would be a good... Yeah, and we can even paint match your edge banding if you just want to go flip through a Sherwin-Williams 10,000 color sure. palette. If I asked you to do a river table, have you guys done one of those? Back in furniture making days, yeah. yes. Yeah. So so that's could. trending down right now. Yeah. It'll trend seen, back up. Not seeing as many of those right now. Not right now, no. Yeah. So this is a nice piece of equipment to have. Yeah. We started with one and we... Three years without one and now we have two. Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, we have I, one you in can't unhave a forklift. Yeah. Oh, you really can't. This is all your plywood. Tons of plywood that we just keep in stock. Um, and actually, you just right before we started recording, you actually just met with your plywood guy. Yeah. To do yeah, another yeah. shipment. Yeah, that's one of our... Yeah, we have three different companies we use for plywood for different materials that we found and that we like using. So. Do you use, I think you and I talked about this, uh, do you use Garnica light ply? We do have Garnica. Um, we have right now switched to an Italian poplar, which is a little bit lighter. Wow, and, and more than Garnica? Yeah, yeah. Because um, like Garnica is like 30% lighter than your standard yep. poplar yeah. plywood. Yeah. yeah, we're always, so I have three different companies and a, a few different salesmen in each and they know what our priorities are. So when they find some Spanish product or Italian product or something that's lighter that they think is better, they'll let me know, so. Are you shocked so, that I even know this lingo? So that was pretty impressive that you <laughs> Thank you, like that. thank you. I think you read it over there on a piece of plywood. I did not, I did not. Look at that. Oh, it is there, yeah. it is there. Upside down, by the way. However, I, I use Garnica in my tiny house. Oh, yeah. It's like save it's weight. A great, it's a great product. And for anybody that doesn't know what light ply is, it's I believe it's a poplar face with yeah. like a separate core. It's just like a, the core material in the ply is a different core that just makes it much lighter weight. I was picking up three quarter inch oh, yeah. garnet and it's like, I'm like, whoa, this our is so standard, much lighter. Coming from a cabinetry world, a standard like three quarter inch, like piece of walnut plywood, A1 grade, which is like the highest grade. Yep. It's like 75 pounds. And garnet and is like 40. Yeah. <laughs> like so, 45 yeah, or something, something like that. Something like that. I love talking materials. I could do that all yeah. freaking day. So this is all just receiving through here. This is so it? This is boring stuff? Just right here, shipping, receiving. Well, let's walk through the receiving because yeah. I think you have another cool area down here. One hey. of our spray booths. So okay. This one's mainly always used for upholstery, so this is where we're doing all of our upholstery panels. So you spray glue? Spray glue. But it is a yeah. low VOC glue. Yeah, it's um, a low VOC. We, we will and we have worked with clients that have no VOC requirements. Because of their, their lungs. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. There's considerations like all materials. There's there's certain things that will cure and not off gas, even if it's not 
zero VOC going on. All right, let's check out another cool thing that I don't know anything about. Our metal shop. A metal shop. So as I walk in here, can I pick this up? Yeah. So this is even like, this is a sheet metal. 99% of everything we do is aluminum. We barely work with steel. Is it aluminum? We do stainless steel for our shower pans and our vans, but that's about it. Everything. That's a thick gauge. Oh yeah, we have some quarter inch thick aluminum too, you can see over here. Oh my goodness, that's a whole so sheet for, of it. So our bumpers for the Bajas are all quarter inch. Do you guys make your own bumpers? I thought oh, yeah. you ordered them. Oh, you do? For the Bajas. So for our trucks, because of how our shell meets like the frame, we have to do custom bumpers. And that's in this shop. Mm -hmm. And I believe that's a press machine that can bend the metal. Right. Yeah. Yeah, so that's not cheap. We'll cut <laughs> all. We have a designer that's designed all of our bumpers, so we'll cut the parts on here. Then our lead um, fabricator over there that you can see in the back, Scott, will break them and weld them all up. And then this is you're making a rack. It looks like for a Baja. This is a frame. So this is the start of the interior structure of the Bajas. So it's just a fiberglass, thin fiberglass shell. And on the inside, the whole like skeleton's an aluminum frame for the strings. Oh, I didn't realize that. Mm -hmm. So they, they, you order your fiberglass shells. Yeah. Because to make one of those is not, you already have everything else. Like yeah, it's well, not we, easy we, to do. We were making them in house. It's our molds that we made. And we've since then realized that we don't enjoy doing the fiberglass in the house sure. or at all. And so, or being around it. Or being around <laughs> it's it. It's pretty. Talk about it's all casting. Oh, yeah, it's oh, potent. Yeah. yeah. So our fiberglasser is out of Denver, and he has our molds okay. that he makes the pieces for us, and we go get them after they're all cured. And, <laughs> and then <laughs> you put this like, is this for the roof? That is the roof piece. I'm pretty sure. And it goes inside. It goes inside, and it gets a um, structural adhesive. Everything is glued to the fiberglass, so the fiberglass and the aluminum become all part of the frame and the strength of the unit. Time out. How do you get that into the Baja? Out here. <laughs> I told you I was gonna be surprised. I thought I knew everything. Yeah, you wanna open that? I mean, is it fine if we open it the lights are gonna... Yeah, yeah, the camera will adjust. Can, yeah. So this is one that just got back from paint. But as you can see, we have a, a lift hoist up here. And so if we can step this right outside, you can see this is actually good. I don't know if you guys are looking at one of them. I haven't. Let's let's take a look. So, so this is one from paint. You can probably get a good this shot from right there. How we get it. So it's the aluminum frame on the inside, structural adhesive all glued in and welded. And then the fireglass. Just a thin fiberglass for the shell. Dude, that's insane. I didn't realize you did all this. Yeah. So a lot of it is assembled in house. Yeah. Or all of it, I guess. Everything except for we don't do the paint in house and we don't do Either. the fiberglass yeah. in house. So you lift off this top, you assemble it all, put the top back on. We drop the main base, which you can see behind Kyle out there. Oh yeah. One you, the welded. camera might have to adjust to the lighting. So we have like three or four of these sitting around, just kind of ready to drop in, depending on Chevys or Fords, whatever it is. Drop the frame straight into the fiberglass. <laughs> and then put the top on. That's insane. Yeah. That is an insane amount of work. I mean, hence the price tag, but <laughs> it's worth it. Yeah. So these things are built rugged. We decided we should push it harder than any client would ever push it. Yeah. And then when we got it back to the shop, we fully disassembled the whole thing to check all welds, to check everything, to make sure everything was solid and held up. And it worked? Yeah, oh yeah. What people don't see is th that that frame against the fiberglass now creates a void where you can insulate. And we yep. use a insulate for all of our insulation. Beautiful. Before, so they're fully insulated. That's, That's awesome. Yeah. When I stayed in the Bajo over the weekend, it was hot. But we opened up all the windows. We did not run the air conditioner, which you put on there, huh. but we didn't run it. And the, the cross breeze kept it cool on the inside. Yeah, well, there's nine windows, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, you can put up to nine, nine windows up in it. Nine windows, so there's plenty we, of it, it just opens up. All we did was turn the fan on and then have all the windows except the front ones where the bed is yeah. open, and that was it. And it stayed very cool in there. Yeah, with the two fans too, which I found, I mean, even in the shop it gets warm, so sure. I'm constantly running them in the shop. But if you have one, so it just circulates, Cir and pulls yep. air. Two max air fans plus a AC if you want it. Yeah. 
Wow. And we can do skylights or whatever you want on the roof. That's awesome. What I didn't see is electrical, and we're gonna end in electrical because I haven't seen it. Is that here? All the electrical gets done in the main production bay. Is it in the main bay? Yeah. Let's, can we walk back in there yeah. and check it out? Kind of step foot in one of our custom trucks on the other side here and show you like mid, mid process. Sure. This is like week two on a four week build. Our trucks are a four week build because there's a lot of exterior stuff well, that has to happen. Four weeks in the shop, six weeks total because of the stuff that happens before it gets mounted to the Got chassis. It. Hey, Ryan, you mind if we step in there real quick? Yeah. You do mind? Yeah, that's always kind <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mind actually. He's working here. He's chair, right? Yeah, buddy. Nice seen, to meet I've you. Seen a lot of your Thanks, man. <laughs> Actually, before we step in, and we're going to talk about this in the Baja tour, but I was just asking you guys about if you're okay, if you're okay talking about this. Oh yeah. I just now, now you got to make it work though. Oh. <laughs> well, I I just camped in your Baja over the weekend, and I I came back with very few things that I would change. One thing being the door opening. Now it's really hard if you can see on camera. This actually raises up 18 inches. Again, we're gonna talk about this in the tour, but the door is really hard to fabricate because of that 18 inch pop. And now your height to your roof is only nine feet, give or take. So because of that engineering masterpiece, it's hard to have a door cut in. And I was like, if you guys can make a higher door, that would be great. And you both kind of smirked at me and said what? Yeah, we're, we're working on it. We're, we should have a prototype tomorrow. Um, so maybe by the time this video last, comes out, we've been be... working on it for the last few months. So, have you really? Yeah. So we work with our fiberglasser in Denver to help us figure out the molds and everything for it. So because that would make a world of difference. So instead of me, like, well, it's it's not even like it's it's happening at this point. Like yeah. we've got it figured out. It's okay. Just... All right. So it looks like we got. Wow, yeah. we're seeing we're seeing some inner guts. Kyle, oh, yeah. you can come on in. Yeah, come on in. And... I'm not where it's best for me to go here, but. Anyway, yeah, so you can. This, this guy is our whole mechanical, we call this our mechanical cabinet. It's got our aqua hot heater, it's got all the plumbing shutoff valves, and then underneath, behind me under your sink here, we have a 30 gallon water tank. And wow. so since this is a custom build, we have to figure out, you know, what systems fit and sure. everything like that and design it accordingly. A lot going on here. You got a lot of crimps in here. Oh yeah, so so we've switched. We used to do shutoff valves for our plumbing at like each source. Now just in the plumbing cabinet itself. Yeah. So we'll label all of those. So those would be your shutoffs for your cold and hot water systems for your outdoor shower, indoor shower, your sink. So if you ever needed to maintain anything on there, you know exactly, like, I mean, we obviously designed it not to leak, but if you ever had a problem, you only need to look in one spot. That's great. Yeah, full victory. I'll let Luke like. take over there. I'm, I, that's out of my league. Mine didn't, <laughs> mine didn't step up. This is a client step up? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so that... And I still have enough room. Yeah. Nice. And it's not it's not even up all the way. Yeah, I think we've got another three inches probably. Yeah, it stands six six. With it up. With it up. With it up. Yeah, so we use predominantly Victron equipment. Uh, so we've got Victron batteries, Victron inverter, uh, Victron solar controllers, Everything. battery protects. The way we design these systems is both to be space efficient, but also maintainable by the end user. So things are going to be labeled. They're going to be redundantly breaker and fuse protected. Uh, if you've got any issues, you know, you're going to come right to one spot and know exactly what's going on. Do most people pick this kind of layout where you're standing at the shower, this is the two benches, galleys right here? In this length truck, having the seating in the back, yeah. I think is pretty common. We've done seating along the passenger side and more of like a, you know, facing Bench, dinette yeah. uh, oh, setup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because that converts to another bed. Okay. So because of the cab, you ride for, you can sleep for. You got your bed up here, your bed back there. That's, so. it's, it's honestly, but, it's, it's one of the know, coolest trucks I've seen. Some people that will just, just be a couple. And so they're like, well, we don't need to sleep more people in the back and we don't screw need, everybody we just need a single seat and a single seat so then they'll get more you know kitchen or they'll get a bigger shower or... did i ask you already like if somebody does bring you like instead of a crew cab can they bring you an extended cab yep we just turned out an extended cab that's awesome we haven't done a standard cab yet but it would theoretically work it should be the fun yeah should be the same they'll just have a little bit same more chassis, hangover yeah. the 
yeah. the windshield. Yeah, your front bed area will hang a little further, obviously, but that's it. Not an issue. So you don't change the length at all, whether it's extended or crew. Yeah, the, the shell is the shell. Got it. We Let's... have two shells: one for the six and three quarter bed, and one for your eight foot bed. Oh, you do. Okay. Yeah. And the only difference is in your six and three quarter bed, you cannot have the side door because you don't have enough between your cab and your rear axle or your back tire to actually fit a door because the wheelbase is narrower. I'm just gonna say, like, this is you mid build. This is like you said, two three weeks into it. This is why the price tag is what it is. There's a lot of moving parts in here for people that don't understand. Kyle, is this what your vans look like? Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> this is a high-priced, great product, is my point. So it comes with a price tag. However, it's all worth it. People were kind of scoffing, you know, at the price tag when we gave it to them. And I was like, yeah, but it's sitting on a $90,000 chassis, you know, and it's like the build is only like a hundred and something. It's like, you're getting a great deal on it. I mean, we think compared to the other Overland truck campers out there, yeah. you know, our, our price point is highly competitive. Yeah, because I, I, I see other ones that are half a million, seven, eight hundred thousand, and you guys are well below that. And you're, it's great, guys, I love it. Um, yeah, let's go out and finish out and kind of... You literally do everything in your facility because we're now standing in a upholstery area. Yep. Looks like, it looks like a one-man wrecking crew in here. One-man wrecking crew, that's Jared. Yeah, hey, Jared. He does, he does it's a all good name. of our upholstery. <laughs> it's a good name. So he does all of our cushions, client cushions and stuff, so they'll pick they'll pick what upholstery they want, and we'll make them here and I'm just glad that you didn't lock them. Oh, really? Yeah, we'll oh, wow. go through what foam, what densities. I'm just glad you didn't lock them into a room. Like, this is an open door. <laughs> and like, if you just, like, threw, a, threw them into a cage, I'd be like... We actually you... lock them in every morning. <laughs> right. Lock, get in your house. Get, yeah, you're not leaving until you do four cushions. <laughs> wow, that's some good stuff right there. This is actually what I want my cushions in my, uh, in my tiny to be like. To so, encourage people to pick them up here because we'll do a full training. Sure. And make sure you're really competent before you hit the road. Well, do you do a la carte stuff? Yep. Like, uh, for example, uh, my man Kyle over here loved your drop table, yep. which will show in tours, but uh, Chad calls it a uh, happy hour table. Yeah. Um, can people just be like, hey, I really want that happy hour table? Yep. Yeah, we ship we parts. Ship, we shipped two out last week, I think. Yeah. So you can be a distributor for different variations yep. of your builds. Yeah, we can drop ship parts. We ship our parts that we build in-house, and then we've got a service center here as well. So you want to come by and have us install any of that stuff. Oh, cool. What about like... Oh yeah, which is right now a Starlink. Holy yeah. smokes, everyone's getting Starlink. So you, so, if, so let's say I own a van or Kyle has a van. Yeah, it doesn't need to be our build. Okay, that was my yeah, question. Yeah. So if somebody was like, yeah, I want a Starlink, boom, yeah. I'll put it in. Yep. Yeah, we'll do this. And then will you look at the build and be like, well, we need to fix like 10 more things. Will you do like typical mechanic stuff? Yeah, we, we'll service other people's builds. Okay. We're, we're not going to push it on you, but we're, we're here to help. You're not going to push it like a normal mechanic would? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we don't want to step on toes either. Like, I mean, yeah, everyone does it a little bit different sometimes. And All right. Well, I didn't know yeah. that was an aspect of also what you do. We take our service very serious too. So like our vans are all over the country and a few different countries. So it's like when we need stuff done, we'd love to have other shops be able to help because it's hard to find, you know, if we got a van in Florida and we don't have anyone. You know, I, I know someone, I'm not going to say it on camera right now and I'll get you in touch with them, but I know someone that's trying to start that network. And I found you guys actually through one of my friends, uh, Troy, Van Life Tech. So you guys have even installed those. Yeah. Yep. Before we move on, I want to ask this one question. What's the most expensive build you've done? That's all Luke. I have no idea. <laughs> Probably somewhere around 350000 That's awesome. We've We're got trying. one van and one truck that are both kind of right there. They're right there? Yeah, that's awesome. All right, let's move on. <laughs> I don't think that we actually even said where you guys are located, but, you know, it's not that hard of a Google search. Yeah. Where are you located? We're in Longmont, Colorado. Which is just north of Denver, if I did my geography right. Yep. Yeah, okay. Right on the front range. And that's a great spot for you guys. You're middle of the country. You have a lot of people that are probably going to want these. Maybe two Baja trips. And so, the name. 35 minutes from DIA from the airport. So fly right into Denver and Uber here. And that's how I'm getting home, everybody. Yeah. I mean, you guys are still pumping out vans left and right. Yeah. I mean, if you want to get a shot of the outside, oh, yeah. there's Yeah, our back lot's just full of either some vans we've just finished up, waiting on clients to come get them, or vans that are in the queue to be brought in the next few weeks to start their builds. So, yeah. I'm kind of curious what else you guys can do. 
even an F550 back there. That'd I be, saw that. Yeah. That thing's a beast. Yeah. Are you putting one of one of your Bajas on it? Oh no, we're doing. We're, you, I don't even yeah, know. bigger. Oh man, for a client? Yeah. Oh man, I want to see that when it's done. Are you guys posted on Instagram? I know you guys are big Instagrammers, and you actually even have a YouTube channel. Yeah. For the client, he's been living in one of our Bajas, and he decided it wasn't big enough for him. So he went with a 550 chassis and yeah, and a bigger. Made it about like twice as big. Twice <laughs> wow. as big as the camper would be about yeah. twice. Yeah. So it's gonna be big. Without putting the client on blast, what what is that price range? For a truck like that, I mean, it depends on what you do to the truck, right? Right. You know, the, you know, you're still, it's a hundred thousand dollar truck. Yeah, at least a hundred thousand dollar truck. You know, before you add liquid springs or do anything like that. Build similar, like to that size, you'd be looking at anywhere between two and four hundred thousand. You got to. Um, I mean, that thing's a beast. Yeah. I yeah, love depending it. Depending on your power systems, that's what people ask me, like how much. I'm like, well, you can build something for fifty thousand, but you can easily put another fifty thousand just in your power system. If you, you can want. put another fifty thousand in, in just exterior components. Yeah. yeah. Thank you guys for uh, showing me and Kyle giving us a behind the scenes look, and now you guys get to share with my audience. Yeah. Anything you guys would like to say at the end here? And I know Ross, you're not really uh, camera friendly, but you did a great job. I appreciate oh, it. Thank you. Yeah. You talked more than, than Luke did. <laughs> Well, this was my scene, right? Oh, this like, is your you scene. Start yeah. talking about price tags and things like that. I'm like, oh, you better go talk to Luke. <laughs> <laughs> well, Luke's, yeah. Luke's probably going to do the tours of the other the other yeah. rigs, so yeah, we're going to get the tours. All right. Well, thank you to uh, Kyle. I appreciate you, buddy. Again, you helped me out quite a bit. Um, <laughs> all right, guys. Uh, Ross Monster on Instagram. Ross Monster on YouTube. Yep. Okay, and uh, check him out in Longmont, Colorado. Is that yes, right? Sir. All right, guys. We'll see you guys next time. All right. Thank you. Later. Thanks,